Hey, welcome back to A Faster Me. This video today is brought to you by Sophisticated and Swanky, your one-stop shop for women's clothing. It's quality clothing at an affordable price. <laughs> um, for 25% off, use discount code AFM2024. Um, they've been gracious enough to sponsor our women's team this year and donate money. So yeah, definitely uh, check out their website. Ellen's already purchased some cargo pants from there. And uh, yeah, they're good. They turned out good. It's good quality. Some cargo pants and a couple jackets, stuff like that. So anyway, this is Rosina Ranch. This is the women's 3-4 race. Technically, the women were not supposed to start right now. That's the men's like 4-5 race going off in front of them. And they were supposed to pull up to the start line and wait two minutes before um, racing. But since the women just kind of went, uh, you know, the officials just said, go ahead and go. And you can see like Marlena and a couple other girls were caught out back here because they knew they weren't supposed to go yet. But anyway, it's all good. It's, you know, um, it's kind of like everyone's in the same boat, but they're off and running now. Watching from the sidelines, we were a little bit confused because in previous years they have started all together. And in that case, you are able to work with the men. So I thought, okay, they went ahead and started all the women with the men. So the fact that the women then weren't with the men on the first lap, I was confused because, you know, if you, if you are started all together, you're able to work with the groups, but when you have the, the altered starts, then you're not allowed to work or get aid from a different group. You have to either pass them or let them pass you. Yeah, and typically they will separate that out by your number. So if it's all like one race, they usually will have the same number. If it's a race that they race together but score different, sometimes they have a certain number, a uh, different number. And then, of course, if you're not allowed to work with the other group, you will always have a different number. Um, but yeah, so this time they weren't really supposed to work with the men, but at the same time, they kind of all started off together. Luckily, it kind of separated right from the beginning. And I don't know if the women did that intentionally or not. I'm assuming so because I know a lot of them could be in that big peloton of the men up there. Um, so yeah, so anyway, it worked out and it ended up being two separate groups. I believe last year, Feline was with the men the entire time till maybe the last lap and she kind of ran away from the women's field just being in with the men's field. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, that was, that was uh, last year was probably the best weather ever at Rosina Ranch. That was at the same weekend as uh, BWR and I think a couple other events. So the field wasn't so large last year, like a lot of people didn't show up, but it was perfect. It was probably 70 something, 80 degrees, no wind, uh, no rain. Um, this, this course is pretty brutal on its own, but it's also in a spot where, you know, it's hit and miss in the winter. Like um, you, you'll get, like you can see it's 48 right now. I know that's not cold for winter in some spots, but 48 with the breeze, you're at the foothill of the mountains and yeah, it gets pretty cold, but usually it's either raining or 30, 40 mile per hour winds through here. So on this day, it's not bad at all. It's, uh, you know, close to 50 degrees and the wind was only like five to eight miles per hour or sometime a little bit of a gust here and there, but not too bad at all. And also this is a circuit race. Um, so it's gonna be a 20 mile circuit race. They got 10 laps, uh, it's 20 miles for this field and there's some pretty good kickers uh you just missed one a second ago i think that one goes up to like 10 12 percent it's very deceptive because it comes off of a downhill um so you when you're riding the course you can't even see that it's a kicker there and then you got these two u-turns that are kind of tricky this is one of them here um it, yeah and i guess they're not really u-turns they're kind of hairpin turns or maybe they are u-turns since they're on the same street but um yeah they're they're kind of tricky there's sometimes a little bit downhill, a little bit off camber. You can see it's been wet the last couple of days just from rain. So, yeah, you got to take them a little bit careful sometimes. And then here, after the U-turn, it gets a little bit fast. And then there's a little uphill section again. And then you'll be heading into the fastest portion of the of the circuit. Yeah, so that's a... Uh, oh, and, and by the way, Ellen is with me breaking down this video. Uh, Marlena wasn't available and we just kind of wanted to get it out since we have just back-to-back -back weeks of racing. I'm still trying to get out a uh, a SL8 review as well <laughs> or comparison to my SL8 and my SL6. 
Um, so yeah, just wanted to get the video out and Ellen's here to just provide, provide her perspective on the race as well. Cat has her tongue. <laughs> no perspective right now. Yeah. No, th this is a, a really nice downhill section. And usually when you're out racing, this is a nice place to recover. I know I've always appreciated kind of after the, you know, kicker on the other side that Anthony talked about in, in the turn, you do a little effort and then this, this downhill is a great place to recover and get ready to do a little work for the kick at the finish line. Yeah, and the, I mean, this is pretty deceptive. Like you see the water tower there to the left. Sometimes people use that as a reference. Um, a lot of times though, when you're coming this direction, when people see that water tower, they think they're closer to the start finish line than they really are. It's really a long drag. The circuit is a two mile circuit. Um, you know, it has some pretty good uphills on it. You can see here, like these aren't like big climbs or anything, but all um, inclines are pretty hard at race pace. You know, um, even though you may carry some good momentum into it and they're not that steep or not that long, but just anytime you're going at race pace, it's gonna tax you a little bit. So yeah, here's the start finish line again there. And then of course you're gonna come into another U-turn or hairpin turn at the top here. And that's basically one full lap there. I think there was seven or eight women doing this race. Get a little confused. We watched the women's pro race later, which I think had six riders. So I believe that there was seven or eight riders who, who did this race. And the first lap or two, they were all together. And then you'll see in a little bit, it's going to get kind of broken up. Yeah, like we were saying, sometimes the field gets a little bit small here just because people never know what the weather is going to be like. And no exaggeration, when the wind is blowing through here, excuse me, when the wind is blowing through here, it's like, it's brutal. It, I mean, sometimes it can be just straight miser miserable. We, I've seen people get blown off their bikes here and crash. Uh, I know we've had a junior get blown off their bike and crash here before. Um, but yeah, it's brutal. You have 30, 40 mile per hour winds, 60 mile per hour winds. We only live like a couple miles from this circuit. And yeah, it's like brutally windy. And today's like a beautiful day, so. They have some strong riders, though, in the field. You'll see right there, that's uh, Morgan. She's from uh, CFT. Morgan's a strong rider. You got Jade Stevens in there, a strong rider. Um, another junior that's really strong. So there's a strong field. There's a there's a number of women in the field. Marlena's obviously strong. And Ellen didn't do this race just because she's still recovering from the crash um, a couple weeks ago. And she just got her bike back, like, last night. So, you know, it was her first ride just... Uh, on her bike again she had been riding my bike and that wasn't gonna last too long because it's just you know too big for her and uh definitely she had the little aches and pains riding the um the much bigger bike so here's going into that little kicker we're talking about like it's super deceptive when you're out there on the field on the course because it does not look like it's this steep and you see there at eight percent already um it doesn't look like it's that steep and i think depending on where you go it goes above ten percent somewhere um, you know, depending on if you're like to the right or the left. I just can't remember which side since I didn't race it this weekend. And there you go. She's at you know, 11% just right there. So, yeah, it's very deceptive. It looks like it's downhill. You, you feel it in your legs, obviously, and it's super short. Um, so it's just a weird kind of course. It's one of those optical illusions where you think you're going downhill and you're obviously going uphill. So Marlena was a little concerned about the U-turns here. But um, honestly, I don't think she did that bad of a job on the U-turns. She, she takes a pretty good line, but unfortunately, because she's a little uncertain about it, she ends up just going into them with very low speed. So her line is okay, you know, not the greatest, not the worst, but it's a decent line. It's just her speed is super slow going into it. So a lot of the girls, even though some of them are not on as good a line that she's on, they're carrying much more speed through it and just navigating the the u-turns a little better i thought the u-turn was a little closer but yeah it's it's a long course like i said it's a two mile circuit so sometimes it's a little deceptive of how far things are away 
But as you can see in the background too, it's a beautiful, kind of like beautiful scenery around, you know, the foothills of the mountain here. That's a Glen Helen Amphitheater, like back there where that hill is straight ahead. So yeah, Marlena dips in pretty good here. She can exit wide here and get on the gas again, but um, she just enters the turn or takes the turn just really slow, um, just because of the lack of confidence there. But again, having a big crash just a couple weeks ago, it's a great bounce back race for her. And I think she's doing a great job out here out front and just putting a little pressure on. And that you U-turn comes after a little bit of downhill so it's easy to carry some speed into it and you know kind of second guess your speed but I like the course a lot um, even though it is very challenging it's enjoyable to be out there racing I wish I was out there today yeah this one breaks a lot of people's spirit like it said it doesn't look that difficult I'm sure if you're watching it you probably think it's not that difficult either but trust me, when you race it, it's a very challenging course. It's not your normal crit. It's not your uh, even normal circuit races. A lot of the circuit races out here in California, even our road races, a lot of them are very flat. This one is just sneaky. Um, you know, there's some sneaky pain here. <laughs> you get a lot of DNFs on this course. <laughs> So again, Marlena's out here setting the pace. I don't know if uh, I'd want her out here doing this much work. If the girls are still on their on her wheel, yeah, I'd you know, love for her to rotate and have somebody else do a little work. If she has a gap, then of course keep going, but I don't think she has a gap because she's not putting in the watts to, to really try to hold a gap or anything. This is just you know kind of zone two for her. And I think here, if you look at some of the landmarks, um, you know, it's a pretty long drag again. So everyone wants to go early and there's a little bit of a head crosswind coming into this section. And then of course it's uphill. So for the final sprint, you really want to wait as long as possible. That fire hydrant there is a good point to sprint at. It's about 120, 150 you know, meters out or whatever. And that's a pretty good uh, spot to launch your sprint. If you're able to wait until that telephone pole, then that's even better. But most people come around the corner and they kind of launch three, 400 meters out. And yeah, they die before they, um, you know, get to the start finish line. So again, if you look here, Marlena takes a pretty good line into the turn here, but you see how she's getting gapped just because the girls carry more speed, even though they're not on the greatest line and they end up having to turn their bikes sharper. But um, Marlena's, just going in a, a couple miles per hour slower than they are. So it's still, you know, she has to do a lot of work coming out the back end of it. Also, one thing here on this circuit, it's kind of like a big hot dog, you know, it's kind of a little bit hot dog boomerang shape. And a lot of people ride the circuit the long way around it. So if you look to the right side here um, and there's a center uh, center divider rule or a double yellow rule here you can't cross the double yellow but you can make the course shorter here by going to the left side especially on a day like today where there's no wind you can ride the course a little shorter being that it's a two miles per lap you'll be cutting off pretty good distance per lap if you ride it to the left side there and make your loops a little bit shorter same same thing on the way back you have a good chance to cut it to the left and then hit an apex uh, on the right side on the curb there and you can just cut off you know some pretty good distance after uh, 20 miles you know you go 20 miles cutting off uh, 50 feet 100 feet per lap and that's going to save you a lot of energy but most people just rode it all the way to the right as if they're in the bike lane and there's traffic going on do you know the rules on if you were taking the sh shorter Part of the course on the inside and another field was passing you would it be their job to go on the right side or should they call it out and you should scoot over to the right to allow them to pass on the left hand side do you, do you know what the proper way to go about that is yeah it just depends i mean really a lot of time it's just you holding your line not deviating um not doing anything uh, unpredictable so it just depends uh, obviously communication from the group that's passing 
Um, that's why we have the motorcycles out there also with the officials. If they give you instruction, then follow those instructions. But if not, if you see them coming, just hold your line. Just stay there and let it be their responsibility to pass you. Um, hopefully they will give you some type of command, but you do not have to try to, you know, swerve or anything to get back to the right side of the course or anything like that. Being predictable is the key in racing. You just want to be predictable. No unpredictable movements, no big lateral movements. So yeah, it's a pretty good effort here. Um, I can't remember Marlena's numbers exactly, but I think she uh, normalized just about, I think under 200 for the race. I'm sorry, average was under 200 for the race. And maybe her normalized was 225, somewhere in there, maybe even 230. Um, but yeah, so I think uh, it was, it's a tough race, you know? Um, it's not easy, that's a, that's a decent amount of watts. Uh, sometimes my goal in my races are to be under um, 220, under 225. It doesn't always work, but if I do that, I know I'm being really efficient in uh, drafting well. So in a race like this, sometimes it's just there's so many spots where you have to use power that, you know, you're going to spike up a little bit. And that was an almost 700 watt spike coming out of that corner and over 10 laps in this race. Uh, that that's a lot of taxing your legs. Yeah, I think on her again on her power numbers, I think her peak power for this race was something like 771. If you look over to the right, I think that's her peak three second power there. Um, but unfortunately, it's not it's not done like during the final sprint. <laughs> so when you have to spike, you know, your highest power coming out of a corner, you know, just to stay on a wheel or do an attack, whatever you're doing. Um, yeah, that, you know, that just tells you that it's a, you know, sometimes there's some hard efforts going on during the race. The women's pro field was double that amount of laps, so 20 laps. So you just think of magnifying that to, to 20 laps is, you know, a whole lot of suffering. Yeah, it is. Like I said, it's a... Um, it's a it's a really nice circuit. The road's not too bad. Um, it's a nice circuit, but it is brutal. And, you know, I wish more people would do it. Uh, but a lot of times people just shy away. You know, we get spoiled in California with really fast crits. And a lot of people just want that all the time. They just want the flat, fast crits. Everyone, everyone out here swears they love climbing. I'm a climber. I love climbing. But anytime there's a race that goes up, no one's in it. <laughs> And while this is nice for us, just a few miles from our house, it's a lot further east for a lot of people. So it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere for, for some people to to drive to it. Yeah, but honestly, it's not it's not that bad. I mean, all the races are like from between here and L.A. for the most part. You know, most of the races are between here and L.A. You got a few in Ontario, which is just down the road from here. And then obviously we got the CBR series which is in Carson and Dominguez and Compton area. So, yeah, I mean, that's just what it is. People live a lot of, I mean, you know, a lot of teams are in L.A. A lot of teams are in kind of the Inland Empire, uh, Orange County. So, yeah, it's accessible. Every, you know, everyone has to drive 30, 40 minutes sometimes. It's no big deal. Here's the same thing there, you know, just again, carrying a little bit too slow speed. The rest of the girls are carrying more speed around that corner and Marlena has a spike out of it coming, you know, out of each turn. So that's Jessica there, Jessica Garner uh, from In Cycle Mommies. Making her, I think making her first appearance on this video. So yeah, definitely here, um, I don't know, the speed could be faster here. As you can see, it's like almost 4% downhill. It's just the girls are kind of chilling up front. No one's pushing the pace. But yeah, you can definitely hit some very high speeds down here, especially without the wind. A lot of times you're going to be closer to 30 miles per hour coming down that hill. But obviously it's easier said than done, especially when you have a small field of 
you know, 10 or less riders um, or about 10 riders, whatever it is that they have. A couple people, I think someone didn't show up for the race and then I think two other people uh, signed up late as well. But either way it goes, when you have a smaller field, obviously the speeds are gonna be a little bit down and it takes a lot more power because there's no, you know, you're not punching as big of a hole in the wind. So a lot of it's, um, you know, you gotta do your own work. I want to say they average, and I could be wrong, but I think they average 22 miles per hour on this race. Unless I'm confusing that with the men's crit, I can't remember. One of our um, one of our male riders raced this race also, and he's in the he's on the course at the same time. Um, but yeah, I, I might be confusing the speed with his race. I think Morgan ended up doing a lot of race. I mean, a lot of work at the beginning of this race as well. Um, you know, possibly a little bit too much, but yeah, she was on the front setting a pretty good pace throughout the race off and on. Um, I don't remember the young lady in blue's name, but yeah, she was up there putting in a uh, good efforts as well. I believe the writer in blue is a junior writer. Uh, Marlena noted she had a different number uh, I'm not exactly sure all the scoring, you know, how it's done. Sometimes it's all scored together, sometimes separate, depending on how many people are in the category. So, you know, not sure of the exact details, but. Yeah, they end up scoring them all together. So, yeah, there was no separation. So everyone ended up scoring together. I don't know if it was intended that way. But that's what the final verdict was, that everyone was scored together. All the women were scored together. Yeah, this is definitely also a course that's uh, really good for breakaways. A lot of the races will have a breakaway. Um, usually not solo, but, you know, you get a couple people off the front and get them a little bit of cooperation, a little bit of work together. And you you know you usually have breakaways in this race either it won't they won't always stick, but you're always going to have a breakaway or so in this race. Marlena got gapped pretty good here, and she has to put in a lot of effort to catch back on here. Not exactly sure what that was, <laughs> what that hand signal was. She, she was talking to the camera somehow. <laughs> Yeah, I think maybe she was having some shifting problems and then it turns out like throughout the day because we went on a we went on a little climb after this race up Lytle Creek and when we first got to the race, you know, she had just gotten her bike fixed from the crash and we got to the race, her left shifter wasn't working. So with some help from Pat, uh, Pat from Go Fast, she got her her coin battery changed in her left shifter. Um, that was like right before the race when they were lining up for the race. And then after the race, she was saying her right shifter wasn't working and it turned out having a problem too. And I think uh, somehow her shifters became unpaired uh, kind of during the race or were intermittently paired. So it wasn't pairing to the uh, derailleur and wasn't shifting all the time. Yeah, I think Marlena got probably less than a 10 minute warm up just having the shifting problems right before the race, which can add a lot of stress when something goes wrong right before you're supposed to be out there ready to race. Yeah, anytime you have some bike issues, it definitely is going to take a hit on your confidence. Um, yeah, especially shifting because you end up being in the wrong gear because you're afraid to shift not, or not knowing if it's going to shift or if it's going to last the duration of the race and you end up holding either too slow, heavy of a gear or too light of a gear just because you don't want to shift as much. Now you can tell it's single file here, so obviously the pace is a little hot. It, I see the miles per hour is not really high, but I say this all the time. Whenever it's single file, I mean, it's pretty uh, fast for the conditions at least. Um, if not, you know, people wouldn't see the need to go single file. They'd ride side by side or in a little bunch but anytime it's single file, it's a pretty tough effort. Yeah, as you can see, Marlena is spiking up and down, even though she's in the draft, you know, 
over 300 watts just to get up the hill. Look like it got a little colder also. It's dropped three degrees since we've been watching. It started off at 48 degrees and it's down to 45. So maybe the breeze kicked up a little bit as well. That may have a, an effect on the speed. There goes Marlena getting gapped again, coming out of the corner. I think she even came by one time and said that was so bad talking about her cornering. So she really was not feeling those corners. Definitely a good chance to recover here as well. You can see she's virtually using no watts. Everybody's freewheeling. And I think this is the first majestic race of the year. We have a pretty, um, pretty full schedule these next couple weeks. You can see a couple of the guys in a, looks like a breakaway off the front there. So a couple guys, you know, lapping the girls here in a breakaway. And that just shows you when you're in that big Peloton, obviously they're guys as well. So the speed difference sometimes is you can definitely get away on this course. And like I said, a lot of these women are strong. Uh, those are cat four and five men. And a lot of these women will race the cat four or the cat five, not typically cat five. They'll jump in the cat four races sometimes. I know Marlena's done it. I believe Jade has done it as well. Another thing that, that is always a factor on this course is the riders kind of lapping other riders and kind of getting in the mix. It's hard to sometimes keep the, the scoring together because there's different groups out on the field. You know, riders getting lapped sometimes multiple times with the front group breakaway. It's really hard sometimes to keep everything straight for the officials who are using a pretty old school method of kind of writing down the numbers as they come through. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a hard deal. And I mean, you only have a staff that's so big to try to keep account for everyone. We don't have transponders. So yeah, every once in a while, depending on where you get lapped, a, a lapped rider can end up getting a, a, uh, the wrong finish or getting scored incorrectly. Um, because the, sometimes the officials may think they're on the lead lap if the leaders are lapping them right at the finish line at the end of a race. Yeah, this was Jade's first race ever, I think a couple of years ago. And so we got introduced as kind of some scoring discrepancies, but you know, great to see her out here getting some revenge from her first race. Yeah, you see a couple more guys came by. <clears throat> and the girls are I'm putting in a pretty good effort there. That's a, like I said, that climb is very taxing. You can tell everyone, uh, their body language was a little different this time around now that we're, you know, four or five laps in. again you can see everybody's taking a good approach they're taking a good wide approach to the u-turn here again i think marlena has a good line just not carrying any speed and then she hits her highest power right here with the spike but this is something that's very good by marlena here she puts that power in she knows it's kind of slightly uphill the uh gradient doesn't always catch up but this is definitely going uphill right here um just before the fastest part of the circuit anytime you're gonna have speed change like this so Marlena puts in this effort. She knows she has to get back on the wheel and then she's just gonna, you know, use her momentum and launch, launch a little counter attack here. So yeah, that's definitely a great job, especially coming from further back. Like the girls were not prepared for that. You saw they were kind of soft pedaling, getting ready for the downhill. And then of course, Marlena puts a little pressure on them here. And you see her heart rate at 198 there, which is she can get a little bit over 200, but this is pretty close to her, you know, top end. So you just know that the suffering is there with such a hard, a hard effort. 
Yeah, and everybody else is doing that hard effort, though. You know, there was a little climb, the U-turn, then the acceleration out, and she had the speed over 32 miles per hour there. So, yeah, it's um, it's a good attack. It's a good counterattack where people are a little bit tired there. And um, unfortunately, I think she ends up uh, dropping Jessica there, putting a little pressure on her. As you saw, Jessica came out of the U-turn and needed to put in a hard effort. And then when Marlena counterattacked, it just um, kind of broke the elastic there. So now they're basically down to four riders at the top, at the top of the field. They're basically down to four riders, and the other um, the other riders have uh, dropped off. And you see, she's still putting in quite a few watts all through, even the downhill, and now yep. going up this little kicker. Yeah, and you see that little kicker got to eight point five or something percent. Jay comes through and is pulling the effort and. Yeah, this is what kind of separates the field here. There was more girls attached, and now they kind of, you know, broke off the girls that uh, were feeling the pressure a little bit here. See, Jay just carries a lot more speed, even though she's not on the best line. She carries a lot more speed than Marlena does through there, and Marlena was on a much better line. Got to get that confidence up on those U-turns. <laughs> and I'm her coach, so I guess that's a, a reflection of me <laughs> not teaching her well enough. Hmm. So, yeah, they definitely need a little recovery here. You can see the heart rate's going down just kind of chilling, cruising back to like a zone two tempo type effort here. And she has the power down a little bit again. Yeah, and shout out to Jade too. That's Jade right there. Jay did a, a really good job here, putting in a lot of work. You can tell she's been working hard or got her fitness up. Um, yeah, she's this in years past. This is not like a, you know, this may not have been one of Jade's like favorite courses or a course that suits her the best. But yeah, she's out there putting in some good work last week or a couple weeks ago at CBR. I know she attacked. Uh, I want to say it was in the P one, two, three race. She had a pretty good attack off the front after winning a, a preem. Or contest, yeah, she did win the preem after winning the preem, then went off the front. So she's definitely improving as a racer and just, you know, um, getting a little bit more confident and being able to just race her bike and not be the same type of rider that she was a couple years ago. Even though she was winning races a couple years ago, um, you can just tell she's, you know, trying uh, a little bit more tactics now than she did in the past. And of course, that comes with fitness. A lot of times your confidence improves as your fitness improves. Another thing that's always interesting to me when you're able to see the races on video is just what happens on the other side of the course. You know, we see them come by in, you know, a certain order, seem to be racing a certain way, and then there's just so much that happens on the other side of the course that you just have no idea. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I remember uh, Anya, Anya and Ari Chin, their their dad a couple years ago. He, I remember he, he was happy that we put the entire video out instead of just making some highlights because he thought Anya was like not doing anything on the backside. He would just see her come by and she's always like drafting, trying to uh, catch up. And she was only 10, I think she was only 10 years old at the time. But I remember when we first met him, he was like, yeah, thank you for the videos because I had no clue what she was doing over there. And she was actually racing really, really well, but he wasn't sure because he wasn't able to see. And every time she came around, she was like kind of struggling in the same position every time. And of course, both Anya and Ari both now are like incredible racers. They're both really fast. Um, they raced for the 2024 last year. I think Ari's still on 2024, and I think Anya's on SDBC now.
Yeah, you can see Jade has the hammer down here. Looks like they caught one of the guys, passed him up, and yeah, she, she has a little attack going here. Just keeping the pace hot. Yeah, in general, this part here is the fastest portion or part of the course here. The other downhill is a little bit longer, but you just get a lot of mo you can carry a lot of momentum here and get some good speed going. Racing is so interesting because everything kind of comes together as far as your personal strengths as a racer. A circuit like this kind of brings that out. You may have to put in a whole lot of effort on the little climbs where somebody else may have that as one of their strengths and then Likewise, going downhill might be your strength and someone else's area where they're really struggling to hold the wheel. So all those things kind of play into then when you want to make moves or think about, you know, kind of what is your best chance of winning, whether it's putting pressure on early to break away or waiting for, you know, the final kind of finishing point. It's just so many things go in and everyone has their own strategy that you're then thinking of you know, your strategy. So a lot of things to kind of think about out there. Yeah. Everyone's for the most part, everyone's somewhat fit, you know, everyone works pretty hard. Um, I shouldn't say everyone, but you know, you guys get the point that a lot of people work hard. A lot of people are putting in the miles, um, putting in the training, hopefully it's effective training, but nonetheless, everyone's training, the effort levels are there. And often it comes down to just mental it comes down to small things and marginal gains and i don't mean like any equipment but marginal gains as far as like your positioning uh you know how efficient you are you know what we've been talking about here the way you take corners that's what makes a difference sometimes like a lot of these uh riders and racers are really fit um you know we do a lot of the same group rides and all that kind of stuff we know each other ride with each other but what makes a difference in racing a lot of times are just the smaller things. The sky and everything looks so, so beautiful on this day. But when I'm there, I was freezing. As a spectator, it's freezing. As a racer, it's not too bad. But when you're spectating, it was freezing. can second that. That is a true statement. Here too, the, the way the course is set up and because it's a little bit boomerang slash hot dog shape, um, Sometimes it's hard when you have a slight crosswind. The winds weren't high. It was maybe five, 10 miles per hour. It made a little bit of difference, um, especially when you're coming back into the crosswind. You can definitely feel, you know, a 10 mile per hour wind. But because the way the course is set up, sometimes you can't really feel where the wind's coming from. And because there's a mountain there and a freeway to the right, the wind kind of swirls a little bit here. We're like in a little bit of a on the foothills and the mouth of a canyon as well. So actually two canyons, one on the right side and one on the left. Um, so yeah, it gets a little tricky with the wind here. And luckily it wasn't too bad of a wind. Cause like I said, normally it's gonna be, I shouldn't say normally, but at certain times of the year, it's gonna be like 20 to 60 mile per hour winds through here. I would say more times than not, it is very windy. Yeah. that this race has come so you were talking about hit or miss it's it's mostly miss for the good weather it's it's no you mean mostly hit oh miss for the good weather yes. yeah 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 so it's just this is maybe the second best like you said last year was nice and then i think every other time i've done the race it's been not the nicest conditions but that makes part of it it's like a race of attrition yeah just kind of gutting it out and seeing <laughs> who has the will to suffer with the elements as well as the race yeah they're still putting in a good dig here that's a pretty good effort going up the little kicker 
Um, you saw a couple more guys go by. I think the the overall men's field is about to come by. Yeah, and then you see uh, that's a I don't know that wasn't Brian, but one of the go fast riders. I think Joe, our teammate's going to come by in a second as well. Yeah, this is definitely just is just a tough. Uh, it's just a tough race. It's just a tough um, course to challenge yourself on, especially because, like I said, most of our races are a lot flatter, um, a lot of four corner crits. We only have a couple circuit races and maybe one or two road races, unless you go up to Northern California. All right, that wasn't the greatest turn. I think she turned in a little too early there, and you can see big gap again. Another 600 plus watt effort. All these little efforts, you know, they add up. You know, you hear people talking about how many matches they have to burn and it adds up. You know, no one has a unlimited amount of matches. And, you know, all these spikes, the, the more times you spike above like FTP, um, the more times that's gonna, I mean, the harder that is for you, the more it's gonna wear on you. Especially when you're like well into your anaerobic range. So here going into the front straight or back to the start finish line, I think the wind is going to be a headwind slightly to the left side. Like coming off the left so i think here you want to be slightly to the right but you know like i said with the mountain to the right and it swirls a little bit in this little pocket here sometimes it's very hard to feel like where the wind is or which side it's coming from there's no real landmarks there's no flags there's nothing around there's no you know trees to get a, a good read on which way the wind is blowing So yeah, overall, looking at Marlena's watts, you can tell she's kind of on the correct side. The watts are low. So she's kind of protected here on this right side. You don't want to be too far detached. You still want to be close to other riders and get the best draft possible. But you can tell she is shielded from the wind a little bit. Think now that it's four riders also you know just a little tip for future not for marlena but for just the viewers watching you you see morgan and the junior up there kind of side by side you know with only four riders in the front group left yeah you pretty much never want to be doing the same effort you know as someone else you'd rather sit behind in the draft maybe echelon a little bit to protect yourself from the wind but you never really want to be side by side up there using equal energy as another rider that's in a if you're in a four person breakaway basically you can see both jade and marlena they're not they're not trying to get up there <laughs> they're not trying to use their own energy beating a dead horse but there goes the gap again so you see us over there to the right that was us with our our beautiful tent i think we're the only ones with a tent on course people had their tents in the parking lot but we're the only ones on, with the tent on course just we didn't need it there was obviously no sun really but <laughs> just just wanted to get some advertising going and just give people a spot to kind of hang out and you know uh, hang their bikes and stuff like that let me tell you the few moments when the sun did come out we wanted to be in it and thawing out instead of under the tent out of the sun yeah, for sure. So here I would think that there's a slight tailwind here, maybe again coming off the left slightly, but I think it's helping. Again, you can see Marlena's watts are pretty low, so 
Obviously, she can probably feel wherever the pocket's at, and she's in a good spot. So here, I don't know if you can tell that kicker is there. Like I said, it's, it's just real deceptive. It looks like it's downhill still, or maybe it's flat, but you can see how it ramps up pretty good here. And there goes a little attack by Morgan right there off the front. Just putting a little pressure on the girls. Another 600 plus watt effort. You can see Marlena's cadence is a little under 100, but she was over 100 for a good section, even though she was doing 300 plus watts. So that'll save the legs a little bit, just having a high cadence, even though it is a, a pretty hard effort. But she does a great job with, with maintaining a high cadence. It's really easy to get bogged down on that hill because it kind of sneaks up on you. So it's real easy to, you know, not, not shift ahead of time and get bogged down. At least I've had that experience um, repeatedly. Yeah, so there's Joe right there, the number two rider with the pink bike that in our uh, A Faster Me kit. Um, so this is the the entire peloton or the next big group or whatever of the men going by. I guess it's not the entire peloton. It's only like eight guys, it looks like. Oh, more to come. Yeah, I think it's the, the main peloton, not the breakaway, but it looks like yeah. that might have been a area where... <laughs> So interesting here, the official pulls up and he goes, how many laps do you guys have left? And Marlena's like, you tell us. <laughs> <laughs> and so he tells them, yeah, you have one, you have two to go. So this is their two to go. When they cross the finish line, they're going to have one lap to go. <laughs> and so, yeah, and she was like, thanks, Steve. Yeah, and so. <laughs> All right, not as bad here, but still a 700 watt spike. Those, those 700 spikes, I think, would have would have dropped me off. Yeah, <laughs> off no. the back with the the 700 watt efforts. Yeah, I'd probably be right with you. <laughs> yeah, they're not they're not easy, you know. I understand it's not a it's not a long effort, but still, you know, anytime anytime you have that high intensity like that, it does tax your legs. Um, yeah, and it doesn't they don't recover fast either. You know, from high intensity, your legs won't recover immediately. It's kind of like doing some squats. They don't just recover immediately once you stop squatting. In my recollection of doing this race, the little effort out of that corner, the perceived effort is it is bad, even though sometimes the, the watts are, are pretty high and they do have an impact over the whole race. But that perceived effort is not nearly as hard as, you know, the hill on the, <laughs> the way to that U-turn. But, yeah. you know, it's just it's very interesting how perceived effort works compared to the reality and you know sometimes it matches up and sometimes it really doesn't yeah you know? the reality for me sense. is that little kicker kills me that little kicker 10 11 12 percent it just yeah it, it just kills me yeah coming out of the u-turns are pretty hard as well and I, you know honestly in my races that i've the times that i've done this coming out of the u-turn at the after the start finish line probably a little bit harder for me just because the speed gets so high on the downhill when we're in such a big group. I usually want to quit right when you do the big hill before the U-turn at the bottom. You just want to kind of cruise downhill, but you still need to do the effort to, you know, get to the downhill. Yeah, get back on a wheel as well. <laughs> yes. So you can see Jade usually uses like a lot slower of a cadence. She has a decent cadence going right here, but often she's in a, a bigger gear, gear and uses a little more power. I'd be interested to see her cadence in this race compared to when she does like the P123 races. I would think she would need a higher cadence in the P123 races just so you don't get bogged down as much.
a little better job there. We only hit 445 or so coming out of that corner. So definitely either the girls didn't accelerate as much or Marlena stayed uh, attached a little better. Heart rate's still good and, and even dropping. You know, I think she tops out at like almost two thousand uh two hundred and ten. Let's <laughs> say two thousand and ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think her heart rate tops out at about two ten, so um yeah, she has technically right now she has you know, almost fifty beats. And I would say she's definitely in the right spot for the wind. Just a second ago, she was doing zero watts and making up ground being over here on the left side. So I think that's yeah. a good indication that, you know, you're protected from the wind, which seems yeah. funny because it, it's a tailwind right now. The direction they're going, it's basically a tailwind. In my memory, the, the wind was coming. It used to come off the left. But uh, well, it like could off be the mountain. Swirling a little bit too, and it might be different down here than it was up by where we were spectating. Yeah. And again, there's two canyons, so they're heading towards like a canyon, and then on the backside there's another canyon. So the wind kind of, kind of whistles through those canyons as well. So yeah, I think the junior riders up front now just pounding the pace, and you can see they're putting in a big spike there 400 and something watts trying to get up this kicker so it's a good good idea you know trying to attack on the kicker here seeing if you know anybody had tired legs but all of them are pretty much still together still powered up this hill she's putting in a strong effort though so my assumption would be this is what she believed was her best chance to win was attacking here and trying to hold it off yeah, Possibly. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if she thought that far ahead or other than other than just let's make them hurt, you know. Again, this course, you know, it's it's tough. If you if you know the course, you understand what we're talking about. But it's tough. It seems it seems like you can put in a hard effort and kind of make it to the end. But most people that try it, unless you're really experienced with kind of, you know, riding breakaways or breaking away solo. Most people go early and they don't make it. And then when you hear that bell lap and it's the last lap coming, um, you get a little antsy. You just kind of, you know, it's hard to it's hard to stay patient. You want to go. But either way, she gave it a shot there, um, you know, put a little pressure on the group and now she's recovering. So yeah, again, I think Marlena can carry more speed here, obviously. 650-watt spike. Good thing is, though, Marlena is really comfortable with the really high cadence, and her heart rate is not too high right now for her. She has about 20 beats in hand. So they have about, oh, probably just under a mile to go to the, to the finish. And I think you can kind of see here, Marlene is a little antsy as well, you know. Just got to be a little bit patient here. And I think, like I said, I think Morgan did a lot of work in this race as well. You know, it's no big deal. All four of these ladies right here are strong at the end. Um, you know, obviously they're fairly evenly matched here. Uh, but it's just kind of hard. It's just you don't have a lot of riders here, but you got to kind of find either a way to save some energy or you probably got to just go off the front and make it hard for everyone. I've seen what happens and I still feel nervous. <laughs> <laughs> how, how is that possible? <laughs> and I'm not even racing. Well, they have some pretty good speed coming up here. Once again, I think the junior rider, as she gets more experience, she probably won't be riding off to the left by herself there. You got to tuck in a little bit better and, and uh, get some. Uh, again, if you're not going to go off the front, no sense doing the effort. You kind of just tuck in. Uh, there should never really be two people on the front here. Again, the wind's coming a little bit off the left, like kind of by that water tower. So I think Jade's slightly protected, but she's a little antsy also trying to get in front. And then I think Marlena gets a little impatient and just jumps here a little bit early. It's not a full sprint, but it's a pretty decent acceleration. 
think she should have waited just a little bit longer. And then you see Jade comes back by here. And Jade, same thing. She's accelerating, but not a full sprint. And then I think that fire hydrant they just passed is where they should have launched. Jade launches here a little bit early. Marlena's trying to catch back up and is making up a little bit of ground, but Jade timed it well and got the victory. So great job, ladies. All right, so that's about it for us, and uh, we'll see you next week at um, Roger Milliken Crit.